20 to go now in regulation. To the line and in, but it's right back out. Great Kovic fans going nuts, wanting the Thunderbirds to take a crack at that open net. Can Guthrie do it? Here's Kovic, scores! Six left. Well, Winnipeg had their chances, but it was way, way too much puck on the power play as they were looking for more and everybody refusing to shoot it there. I thought Salati should have stepped into that. Instead, they continue to look for something better, and Seattle's penalty kill just far too stingy. No shots on the power play. That resulted in this. A fumbled play in the neutral zone. Gunther gets it up to Krinkovic, and that is going to put this on ice as the Seattle Thunderbirds will send the Winnipeg Ice home. Down by two in this final. Brinkovic with the empty netter. And he'll never score a finer empty netter than that one, you wouldn't have to think. Niall Krinkovic, he's had himself a strong series. There's Riley Wood and some of the ice with the writing on the wall now. They've put up a battle here tonight. An empty net goal, making it a two-minute, a two-goal disadvantage. And the fans aren't going to take a seat for a long time now. Ice trying to get it out of the zone. Let's let the fans take it the rest of the way. There goes wide, and it is icing as Hauser went to the bench in favor of an extra attacker. But Seattle knows what's going on here. So do the fans. This team went to the final last year. They lost in six to Edmonton. They had a mission, unfinished business. Brinkovic, he effectively iced it a minute ago with that empty netter. 15.6 left. first game things changed in the second they got a couple of goals in an eight second span they won easily in game number three game four was tight tonight was tight too the ice put up a heck of a battle but this is some kind of team these seattle thunderbirds are, are they ever and they really it starts back in september in training camp and you go through exhibition season 68 regular season games and you grind through four series to earn the right to hoist the Ed Chanel Cup and punch your ticket to the Memorial Cup in Kamloops, which starts next Friday. There's two excellent coaches shaking hands and showing respect as they guided two elite, phenomenal teams as Winnipeg Ice have nothing to hang their heads about. They made it interesting. Seattle Thunder Birds were just too big, too strong, too talented, too good. And a terrific in goal with that man, Millich. With all the great chances the ice had, he stopped all but one. He made 30 saves on 31 shots. Played every minute is 
goaltender in Tandem this year. Scott Ratzlaff was terrific, too. Didn't get a chance to play in the postseason. Milic has been outstanding. Popovich with a big goal tonight to get them on the score sheet. Daniel Hauser was excellent tonight and uh, in his entire WHL career. So we'll hang out with you here as long as we can, show some presentation, some reaction. Zach Benson, he was all around it here tonight. What a future this kid has, but pretty tough to tell these guys right now that the, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. Yeah, that's exactly right. Nothing makes that kind of pain go away. And as much as they have to be proud of, it feels like it's all for nothing because you don't get the final prize. And you look at the head coach, James Patrick, and the job he's done over the course of five, six years building this franchise. Matt Cockle, the general manager, the moves that he made to put this team in a position to win, Excellent, excellent season for the Winnipeg Ice, and there is your WHL champions and their captain, Lucas Siona. What a series. Second time they've won the WHL championship. Last time, as Kevin mentioned a little earlier, against uh, in 2017, when Matt Odette was assistant coach. Well, now he wins it as head coach, and the celebrations go on here. Siona took a penalty late. Winnipeg tried to tie it in the power play, could not get the shot selection they wanted. How about that shot of Siona? <laughs> There's Connor McLennan. Brilliant career comes to a close. Brilliant junior career, that is. And the time honored tradition, the handshake line following the series. You said something a couple of games ago about the discrepancy between the 19 and 20 year olds and, and a young maybe Jonas Wu. And it's well said because you come into this league and, and take it from me I, I was an 18 year old rookie, but when you, when you show up you're still a kid and when you leave you are a man because of all the things you learn on the ice off the ice the responsibilities the grind and a lot of players might not be successful hockey players when they're done in junior hockey but they will be successful in life or set up for success because of all of the lessons these young men learn along the way And you would think that when the playoffs, before the playoffs began, not to diminish any of the other teams in the WHL, but I would think the Thunderbirds were thinking we're going to meet the ice and vice versa at some point. Some close games in this one. That's Latimer. He had a terrific series. Riley Wood. There's uh, Mason Bullpit. We saw a little bit of him. There's Matt Odette. How much he's learned as a coach as well. It's not just about developing players, but coaches. You mentioned the assistant coach back in 2017, and that was led by Matt Barzell. And Matt Odette has done such a fine job for these last couple of seasons. His teams have been elite. Well, coming up in a couple of minutes, we're going to have the presentation of the series most valuable player how would Hansel he had the two goal and assist game a few nights back put his stamp on this series for Seattle one of the most valuable players in my opinion not all of it jumps off the sheet but little details big plays of course the goals but it's more about the shutdown ability that he had along with Nolan Allen they were excellent all playoffs long. For so many of these players, they'll go on, some will play pro, some will not. It'll be tough to find a happier moment than this for these junior age players. I think a lot of them realize that these are some of the most impactful and, and maybe even some of the most enjoyable years that they'll ever live. You look back after being a pro and it was all, oh, the ride is excellent, right? Every, every experience is great, but when you're a junior, Right? It's just a, a group of 24, 23 guys, all with one goal, your best friends built in. And, <laughs> let me tell you, Dan, it's been great memories. Connor McClellan finishing his season, the regular season, 92 points. He had 23 playoff points. Credit Seattle, they kept that first line of check. It's a storyline we followed. 
that we can commence with the official closing ceremonies Helm, the public of the 2023 WHL Championship Series presented by Nutrien. Ticket tonight to right, some of them right now. Here's Tom Hill. The WHL would like to congratulate the Eastern Conference champions, the Winnipeg Ice, on an outstanding season. The WHL would also like to express its sincere thanks to fans across the league for their support this season. Safe to say nobody has left Showwear Center as of yet. Presenting the 2023 Western Hockey League Playoffs. Most valuable award. Most valuable player award is WHL Vice President of Hockey Operations, Mr. Richard Dirksen. The WHL Playoffs Most Valuable Player Award is presented to the individual judge to be the most outstanding player during all four rounds of the 2023 WHL Playoffs. The Most Valuable Player Award for the 2023 WHL Playoffs is number 35, Tommy Smith. And his the dream season, season continues. Gold at the World Juniors, MVP of the WHL Playoffs. Just so tough to beat tonight. Look at that smile. Well earned and what a memorable past couple of years for Thomas Millich. He attended the Minnesota Wild training camp undrafted and something tells me that he is going to have pro hockey in his future. Scouts, general managers, coaches at the pro level look for that X factor. Players that know how to win and Thomas Millich certainly knows how to do that. And it is the type of team and they had the type of playoff. I'm sure it was difficult to choose an MVP. As the Millich chant comes up. I think of the save he made with five, four minutes left in, in game four against Ostapchuk where they would have tied that game. And it was a point-blank shot and he made it look easy and it almost took the wind. You can hear it, feel it coming off the bench of the ice. Some congratulations from Sasha. Ladies and, and gentlemen, the Kent Police Department. Represented by Liam Bertolotti and Officer Tristan Thomas, accompanied by Western Hockey League Commissioner Mr. Ron Robinson, will now bring out the Ed Chanel Cup Trophy to center ice for the presentation of the WHL Championship Trophy. The Western Hockey League Championship Trophy, the Ed Chanel Cup, is named in honor of past WHL Chairman and President. Mr. Ed Chanel. Mr. Chanel, who also served as president of the Canadian Hockey League, was the driving force in the growth and development of major junior hockey for over four decades prior to his passing in April 2008. Mr. Chanel was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in the builder category in November 2008. And now, for the presentation of the Ed Chanel Cup, presented annually to the WHL champions, Western Hockey League Commissioner, Mr. Ron Robinson, will now present the Ed Chanel Cup to the captain of the Seattle Thunderbirds, Lucas Siona. And we told this story before, as Siona's gonna hoist that trophy. Seattle waited to name a captain after the trade deadline was come and gone. They went with Siona. And look at the smile on his face. Give me that trophy, he said.
this earlier. Davidson said today, I am having the time of my life. And Krikola, he put this one away with an empty netter. From an acquisition from the Saskatoon Blades, bringing in Krinkovic, who was uh, impactful in so many ways. 30 goals in the regular season. They got some big ones in this series alone. Lou Kropa. What, I mean, to state the obvious, this is tremendous for these guys. Oh, a memory for a lifetime. And Lucas, Luke Polkop hoists that cup two years in a row. Getting good at winning, Dan. <laughs> it's a good habit to have. <laughs> Reed Schaefer, part of that first line that was just so difficult to handle. And they'll be difficult, as we've said, a couple weeks' time at the Memorial Cup at Campbell's. A team that is as balanced as I've ever seen at the junior level. They've got the speed, the skill, the size, the goaltending. The Defensive defenseman, the coaching. I mean, it, it's quite remarkable. And you shouldn't forget about a rested Kamloops Blazers team led by Sean Clouston, of course. Logan Stan Coven, Roland Zellweger. That is a remarkable team as well that will be hosting the Memorial Cup in a week's time. It was Jordan Gustafson who made a series debut tonight. Colton Duck came from Kelowna this year, added some size and strength and depth. Position he was the type of player you need on the back end to win. He moves the puck so efficiently, always on the ice against the Savoy line, and made life miserable for the other team's best. Speaking of which, Jimmy Hansel had something to do with that. Very steady, productive. Dylan Gunther, the game winner in game four. Speaking of winners. Couldn't finish last year in the league championship, so back-to-back -back titles for he and Prokop. Fitting, because his last game of last season was in this building in Game 3, where he got injured in the final, never to play again. There's Brad Lambert. Lambert finishing the playoffs with 26 points. The Guy Sanders, this kid's from Washington, from Dick Harbour. So now comes the team photo. Seattle with a 3-1 victory in this game, 4-1 in the series. And uh, one of the great keepsakes that they'll ever have, this photo. Yeah, 